Uh, World Championship men's race today. Obviously, I predicted it right. Not really a surprise, is it? I do it. I've done it before. I'll do it again. Philippe Ogana won yesterday. Obviously, Chloe Dygut crashed out. She probably would have won. Uh, we're not. We're gonna go through the uh, men's race um, today. I couldn't really see much point going through the women's race because none of them uploaded in Strava um, and all the rest of it. So there's to be fair, the men's don't too much either. But at least we had a couple of people who were who were decent. So anyway, obviously, Ghana won. Wow, Van Aert, Stefan Kuhn, Geraint Thomas, all very solid. So first, I'm just gonna go through like positions and the tech that I found when I was watching it, and then we'll go through some numbers afterwards, um, and hopefully. That will be enjoyable. If you're liking the new camera, obviously you'd love us a like. Um, you might actually be able to see my face for the first time, which could be a bad, or uh, good or bad thing. Uh, but now we'll get into uh, the positions and tech. Right, so I've got my little slideshow up. Um, so this is obviously Eduardo Affini um, for Michigan Scott. Uh, we're going to try and get a little pointer out, the laser pointer. Um, so obviously he's running a lightweight auto barn disc, which Michigan Scott generally do. Pretty nice position here. High um like arm pads are very high, which means you can sort of press into them, get a narrow position, uh, and try pro um a pro tri spoke at the front. Probably a fifty eight. Everyone says you run fifty eight minimum. Uh, but we look at his teammate. He's running. I think this is an Aero Coach disc wheel, which apparently Ineos were also using. He's also using uh, the C sixty on the front, which a lot of people say is quicker. They don't rate it. He's also got custom extensions. They look like it could be dragged to zero ones. I don't think they're all integrated, but I don't quote me on this. I'm not 100% sure which one he runs. It's really hard to figure out who makes which ones. Obviously, nice overshoes, helmet, no visor, which is a trend recently, uh, which I, I think Campanet started. Also, that looks like an error quick release skirt, which is pretty good as well. Looking pretty pinned, to be honest, Derbridge. Didn't have a great day out, but anyway. Now we've got G. Um, so he's got these 3D custom printed brake, uh, like brakes. You can see they've got holes in them and stuff. I guess saves some weight. Um, he's got Princeton Carbon Work front wheel, rear wheel. I don't know what it is. They were running uh, Aero Coach. I'm pretty sure rear wheel, and obviously they're sponsored by Pro. But I don't know if that's a Pro disc wheel because normally it has a texture on it and it says Pro. And considering there's no labels, I think it could be an MV one potentially. But um, don't quote me on that. Um, obviously overshoes don't look like the stock Ineos, uh, stock uh, Calas ones that GB would be using. They look like custom ones. I think Dowsett was running them as well. Uh, and obviously a 58 tooth chainring. He doesn't really go too, too uh, crazy, Garen Thomas. Nice custom armrest as well. Um, pretty mint position for UCR wise, that's that's one of the best you're getting. And a cast Patone on the back. Uh, not Patone, sorry, what's the, <laughs> not mint. <laughs> Bambino, sorry, getting confused here. Uh, then we've got a classic Shimano sponsored team with the tri-spoke front and the uh, like tri-spoke uh, tri and then front and then obviously the rear disc, which has Pro on it. And if you look, that looks very different. There's like an indentation, which is why I don't think it's a pro, um, pro disc wheel. If any, if you, if you do know the answer to these questions, obviously leave them below. But most of them, uh, he doesn't. His vision, uh, like obviously stamina, everything doesn't have custom, uh, laser helmet. And again, I, I assume he's on a 58. And again, these don't look like the stock ones that um they normally have, which are made um. Yeah, so these look like they're definitely some custom overshoes, which is nice. Uh, Demoulin's got his normal Lorena Yumbo ones or Yumbo Visma ones. And again, he's similar setup here, but he's got custom extensions because he's a big boy and Wout Van Aert isn't allowed any, which I think is a bit rude, to be honest, for Wout Van Aert. Um, but it is what it is. Um, we now go over to the winner, obviously, people Ghana. Um, he's again got the, the Princeton Carbon Work front wheel, not to a rear wheel again. Going to be the same as Gary Thomas, as I assume. Uh, Drew Race, 58 tooth chain ring. He's got the uh, integrated bar and stem. Um, he did use the Aero Coach ones, but I think these are now actually not Aero Coach ones. But if you look, because he's such a big rider, there's big UCI issues. So the length from here to here can only be a certain point. And even when you're like over 1 90, you still get special disc compensation, but it's only like 5% more. So he actually um, has his like elbows not on the pads and his arms really far forward. So I reckon his hands are barely on the shifters, but that's just because of the UCI rules. So you can see this weird angle. And you'll see Mikhail Björk is a similar one because they're both big boys, um, and that's the why. But as weird as this bottle as well here, um, and these are the Castelli overshoes. Obviously, any else, I assume Garrett Thomas probably used Castelli ones as well instead of the Callas, um, but I'm not 100% sure. Remy Cabanion, nothing new here, to be honest. Pretty similar one, but I'm just gonna do comparison. His overshoes are horrendous as well. They're just like not textured at all, and just like not the ones you want. Um, and obviously just standard setup here, slight armrest adjuster, but nothing crazy. 
Um, we'll go over to his teammate here, who's Casper Askreen. Um, who's look, he's got like this wax chain. I I suppose as ceramic speed of Danish, they sponsor them. He's also got custom extensions as well. So this is like, oh sorry, these are the Escort ones actually. They're not as bad as I thought they were. Um, but generally, like you can see, it's quite interesting. Even same trade teams have quite different setups on a TT bike. Um, so he gets the custom extensions. Like that, the position wise is like. You know, they're, they're similar ish riders. Casper Cas Screen, I think, is a little bit taller, but he's definitely got a better position, wax chain, things like that. Just little things on a world CT, like 10, 15 seconds over 30k is the difference between like you know, a couple places for sure. Um, he's got the OG boy Campanet. Um, he's got the Aero socks, which we're loving. I can't remember who makes those Aero socks. Like, I know the brand, but it's just momentarily lost my. Lost my head. Uh, he's got an MV rear wheel, MV78 front wheel, so pretty standard stuff. He's got a one by chainring that you can't really see, but um, a rotor one by chainring, probably 58, Duras DI2. I mean, I'm not saying the group set because they pretty much all run DI2 because SRAM is not good. <laughs> and I have SRAM <laughs> and it's not good. Uh, and then we've got Speed Bar. Um, he's left the branding on. A lot of them guys all use Speed Bar. Jira Arrowhead, no head visor again. Um, I remember him saying that in the hour record that he didn't have a visor because it tested. I think faster or negligible, like basically same speed, but he said he cooled down so much more um, when he had the visor off, so that's why he kept it off. Um, but yeah, uh, here we've got Mikael Björk. I couldn't really find a good picture of him, but there are a couple differences. So this is Terreno, he's got some warm mark on it. He's wearing a one by here, as you can see. Um, his overshoes changed from the UA stock ones, which I think are champion systems. He's, he's wearing rule 28 overshoes here, which is what he did when he was under 23. Uh, met Manta both of them. I don't know who makes all their kit, but um, Looks okay, so it's pretty similar. I think he run, might be running Aerocrit with his skills as well, um, but generally the setup was pretty pretty decent. He has a really weird position though, like as I said before, quite strange. Um, but we'll move on from him over to Rowan Dennis. Again, I couldn't really find a great picture, but you know you know his position. We don't need to go through that. Uh, difference is obviously he's running a pro disc front wheel rear, which uh, Moscon and Thomas weren't uh, running 58 tooth chain ring, Santini socks. He hasn't got custom bars, which is odd. Um, He's got a Cast Mistral, which is the short one. I think also uh, Ganna was wearing that as well. It's just slightly shorter than a, a Bambino and generally seems to test better if you have like quite a touch position. Um, but, well, like if your head goes up and about. Uh, Bottle again seems this is weird elite one, which is what Ganna had on, but clearly it must test decently because otherwise they wouldn't have it on. And to cover the um, transponder looks like a nice inner tube or something. This lad is a, this lad is called Lenkensund. And I quite like always analyzing the um, smaller riders because they generally allow, like in terms of team, like pro quantity riders, because they generally allow more customization. So obviously he's got a one by chain in here, not just stock Shimano one. Uh, he's got these overshoes uh, from his t from Norway, I assume. Uh, Jira Arrowhead, but you can see he's got watch shop um, adapt watch shop armrests, which I assume are probably like 15, 15 millimeter uh, degrees like uh, upwards, so that he can get a better position. Um, I couldn't find a better position than this. And then DT Swiss wheels, um, you can't see the rear one. But you can see he's like allowed a little bit more customization and allow like higher arms so you can push in for more. That's what I said before. We now got Alex Dowsett, who's the king of mods, and I know more about his bike now. So these are both revolver, um, like front wheel and rear wheel. Very weird looking, but he seems to use them. Fiberlite like 58 or 60 tooth, I don't know, 100% sure. OSPWs, um, so oversized pulley wheels here. Uh, again, overshoes, they look the same as G, so they could be GB like prototype stuff. He's got drag to zero extensions. Um, these are, I remember him going to the wind tunnel with drag to zero. He's got Oakley's, um, and then he's got obviously the pop ventral, which is uh, an incredibly popular helmet, which is now actually back in production. He's on an S work ship, which is blacked out, and he's all gone all in for this. And to be honest, has it been worth it? I don't know. Um, but he's running Vittoria Corsa speeds. Um, you can see the, sorry, Vittoria Corsa um, speed on the back, and I think probably on the front, he's just got a town ball one. Um, now this is Matthias Brende. You might say, why have you picked him? Why have you picked horrendous pictures? He had the most modded bike, but I couldn't like get it a good picture of him. So anyway, you can see he's one in one by a train ring. It looks pretty big. I'd say sixty, not as aero as Dowsett's one. Like if you look there, his is fully um, covered in. He's running the factor, so actually his tra proper trade bike. Um, then he's also running OSBWs. He's got a beautifully waxed chain as well. Um, his position was looking pretty mint, to be honest. Here he has velitos and um, like weird overshoes. Here it looks like he's just you know going training or whatever, but he's not. He actually had these weird like black overshoes on, um, and then he had a Jira Arrowhead as well. Um, and that is all we are going to do for the tech round. We're now going to go over to the power and see what 
numbers people were doing. Right. So this is the segment, the world's individual time trial 2020, 31.29 kilometers. So it misses a little bit, but pretty much all we need. So Wat Van Aert, he did it in 36, Grace Brando in 41.12. We can, we can go through Grace Power Brown at the moment, like 300 watts for them. Uh, for Norse God, who was like sixth on the day. Um, but a lot of these people don't post power and it's a bit like, oh, top four didn't post anything. So it's a bit annoying. Uh, Wout Van Aert obviously got on the podium but didn't do power, but we'll have a look at his ride because it's still pretty interesting. Um, and Alex, obviously Alex Dowsett was top 10 as well. Um, but you can see the sort of numbers, like Max Walsh is huge. He's like the, one of the biggest boys I've ever seen and does 474 watts. Jan Tratnik, obviously 20 seconds back, but 360. Ryan Mullen, 413. Brandley for 40. So you can see from here that people's numbers are actually like really, really different. Like 370 watts for 40 minutes is obviously very solid in a time trial position. But he's doing like 100 watts less than Walshard, but he's not going like that much slower. Oh, sorry, it's a minute slower. But it's not like crazy, which I think comes to like the point of like position equipment is really, really important. And that actually like you'll always see Alex Dowser undershoot on the numbers. Um, but always does well. Like if you, his worlds last year, he did like 400 watts and came fourth, which is like mental. Obviously this year was a bit disappointing for him. I think he's probably hoped for more numbers, um, but we'll go through Wild Van Arts TT um, just in terms of speed. So you can see, obviously there's a huge speed differential here, like the first to the last, and that's just because of the tailwind. So, you know, if we look at the first half here, he only did 47K an hour, which is like obviously still very, very quick, but nothing crazy. But then this part here, from like here to here, ridden at 62 kilometers an hour average. And if we take just the tailwind, 63. And that is crazily fast. And this is why, you know, he's doing 100 cadence, but this is why you need the 58, because you want to have good chain line, even at 63 kilometers an hour. Um, but it also shows like, you know, you've got to be used to riding at a super, super fast speed, and that you can't just be used to riding like, you know, on the fi in at 50k an hour, 55k an hour, you've got to be used to riding at super, super high speed. And they said, obviously, that helps the TT riders. If we look in terms of Dowsett's power, he obviously finished um, the highest up on this. Um, I'll just double check on Paul Sykes' stats, but I think he finished about ninth on, on the day. Um, and we're going to see how far back. So he, so he, yeah, he finished ninth on the day, a minute back. So, you know, decently, he finished one and a half K an hour slow, which is like pretty, pretty significant, but nothing too crazy. Campanets will probably upload, but I don't think any of these boys normally upload with power, which is a bit of a shame, but. I mean, I don't, I don't really understand why people don't, but I guess you can figure out their CBA, but I doubt that really matters too much. So the pacing strategy of Dowsett was always going to be interesting. So he did 415 watts on the way out, which again makes sense into a headwind. You always want to pull, push more watts. And he did 46 kilometers an hour. This is 5.3 watts per kilo. So like watts per kilo wise is nothing crazy. Obviously people are going to be like, oh, it's a TT, watts per kilo don't mean anything. But that's my point is that you don't need to be like a super, super strong rider. Um, necessarily to uh, still do well in TTs um, as long as your aero has. And on the way back, he did 374 watts um, and 56 kilometers an hour. So obviously that was good. Towards the end, it was pretty spiky. These little climbs here were like quite grim. And you can see he sort of put, um, spiked up to 450. Um, and this was 490 for 30 seconds. And again, this 30 seconds was 490 as well. Um, judging by his cadence, I think he did that in the saddle, which is, is a good idea because you're going 33K an hour. So it would make sense to try and stay aerodynamic in that position. Uh, but yeah, that's that's about it, to be honest. Like to, to win a world TT, I mean, you got to ride 53K an hour. In terms of watts for Ghana, I mean, I'm predicting 500, probably 480, something like that, 480, 470, but he's a very aerodynamic human. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my thoughts on the world championships. Uh, pretty interesting tech going on and everything else. Um, but you can see here, like Len Kinsu, Looked like he had a good position, was pretty dialed with his tech. Finished a minute 30 back, probably against people who were, m many people would argue better TT riders. Um, and, and that's the point is that like Dowsett, you know, he did 400 watts um, and beat De Milan, which is obviously very impressive. Um, but he also beat like people like, um, well, uh, what's his name, Luke Durbridge, um, who was doing like, what, 35 watts more? And he beat him like that's the power of aero that's the power of being able to ride the course and being a tt specialist in terms of just a lad with lots of watts i.e max Welshard, who has 474 watts um but anyway cheers for watching hope you enjoy this video um and we'll see you in the next one